going to run through a few announcements before we get started. Uh, don't forget tonight at 6 p.m., Brother Bradley Walker will be with a special guest singer, singing this morning, uh, this evening. So everybody come back and, and worship with us in song with Brother Bradley Walker. Uh, don't forget, Wednesday night, we'll, we'll have no Awanas. We'll be here for revival services. And so no children's church today or next week due to it being uh, youth day today and then Easter Sunday next Sunday. Uh, Operation Christmas Child Items of the Month for April. Ivory soap and toothbrushes. Be looking for those items. Uh, I'm proud to announce we did meet and exceed our Annie Armstrong Easter offering go. Uh, $1,350 this morning. And so you can still give all the way up to Easter for that. If you haven't given yet, please do so. And don't forget, uh, our spring revival uh, to this morning is our youth service. Uh, Brother Nathan Goforth will be doing the music. And Brother Wyatt Sexton will be doing the preaching. And we're glad to have him and uh, them and all their guests with them, with them today here at town. And then on uh, Monday through Wednesday night at 7 p.m. each night, Brother Brian Bridges will be, do, be doing the preaching. Uh, we'll be feeding them on Tuesday night. Uh, fellowship meal at 6 p.m. soup and sandwiches and then Wednesday night uh, church is going to be providing chicken and everybody else bring a side dish or dessert. And then next Saturday, April the 16th at 2 p.m. spring into fun. Uh, Easter egg hunt, bouncy house, slide, con cornhole, hot dogs, fellowship, everyone is invited. Uh, so please come out for all of those activities this week. We're going to have a great week. Busy week, but it's going to be good. Any other announcements that need to be made? In our Sunday school hour, we had 33 in attendance and offering of $51. We had 60 contacts turned in. We appreciate that. Anybody have a birthday in the past week? No birthdays, anniversaries? Brother way. We're going to get our hymn books, turn to page 141, and uh, we're going to sing the Old Cross, and then we're going to turn uh, Nathan to Luce this morning. Again, we appreciate uh, you being here. Uh, let's all sing and sing this song, and before we start, uh, just look at your neighbor and just say, hey, we're glad you'd be here. Hey, Eric's got the uh, Miss Townley way back there. Uh, I think it's four verses on there. Is it four verses on there, Sam? Yeah, let's look on the screen. All four verses. Page 141, look on the screen. Let's sing that.
time. Let's all bow our heads and, and uh, let's pray for all of the needs. Uh, does anybody have a, uh, I know we don't we pray for one another. Anybody got a spoken prayer request this morning before we do a little prayer? Any other spoken request? Uh, Sandra's aunt, uh, for a lady Elsher, not doing good. But she's at home now. Anybody else? Anybody else? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you. Uh, again, praying for the service this morning. Uh, again, we appreciate Nathan and, and Wyatt being here with us today. We also want to know if you're if you consider yourself a visitor here this morning, please know we're in God's house. Amen. And, uh, and let's just go to the Lord in prayer. God, we pray for all these requests, all the ones that's been mentioned, all the ones on our prayer list, even ones we prayed about earlier in the, in the Sunday school hour. God, I pray that you would uh, be within each one. God, this morning we pray for uh, Nathan, God, as he comes to sing for us. Just thank you for him using his talent for the Lord. And, and I just pray God to bless him. Lord, also today as, as we have... Brother White here going to bring the word, going to preach for us, Lord. I just pray, God, that you just give him just the, the message that we need to hear, God, that you just uh, fill him with the Holy Spirit, God, that the only thing they can see is Jesus and, and, uh, and your son. Lord, I thank you so much for these young men. I pray for our youth. Lord, I know today's designated youth Sunday. God, we pray over them daily. Uh, God, we know that we live in a day and age, God, that uh, we need to, the youth, Lord. I know they go through a lot of things, Lord, but to hear the word. And, and I pray, God, for these young men and these examples. And Again, we just pray that this morning that you would get the glory, Lord, for this service. God, that you be lifted up. And God, that we'd see one more saved. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again, y'all be seated. Uh, I'll say this real quick. Nathan, you come on up Sir. and get ready. Uh, I know Al, if you go for it, y'all, I'm sure y'all know him. Uh, if you know Al, go for it, raise your hand. If you don't, okay. A few of your family didn't raise their hand. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, like they all have known Al for a long time. And, uh, and a wonderful man, and and, uh, and I know once we we actually had White come to pre uh, come to preach for us on a Sunday morning, and I knew he had been singing uh, at his church, uh, Harmony Grove Baptist Church in Winfield. Uh, I've actually uh, I'll say this: I give him plugs all the time when I'm up there. If I'm in the church around Winfield, I had to go see Harmony Grove Baptist Church. But I love Alan, and I appreciate their church. Appreciate Nathan using his talent. And then this morning, y'all give him a hand clap. We appreciate it. Good morning, everybody. I appreciate y'all being here this morning, and I appreciate y'all inviting me to come worship with y'all. It means a lot. All right. This first song is called Strong Enough by Matthew West. Sing along if you know the words. But 
I said unto Peter before them all, If thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of the Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Jews to live as do Gentiles? We who are Jews by nature, and not sinners of the Gentiles. Now, right here I'm going to stop and explain a little bit deeper into the scripture and different things that happened in the past. Circumcision was a very, very big thing to the Jews. Circumcision first appeared in Genesis chapter 17 where God appeared before Abraham and promises him that his descendants will become a great nation and that they will inherit land. But he makes a deal with him that Abraham must circumcise the males of his household and that his, his descendants must also follow this ritual and tradition, that they must circumcise the males. And so the Jews got to a point of prejudice where they looked at everyone that was not circumcised as lower than them because they were God's chosen people. But he, they looked at people that weren't circumcised lower. And Peter got back in his Jewish prejudice and he would eat with the Gentiles, but when the Jews showed up, the circumcised ones showed up, he wouldn't eat with the uncircumcised. He wouldn't, he wouldn't get around them. And that's not how we're supposed to be. The Bible is for everyone. The Word of God and the Gospel is for everyone, not just someone. Just not. You can't put a stipulation on the Bible. You can't put, oh, it's for this person, but not this person. That's not how the Bible works. That's not how this works. And Peter had fallen off in this. But I want to I compare what Peter was in right here to something else. Peter, a lot of people today I see in the church, not everybody, but I see it. They mirror Peter in the way that they act one way in the church in a completely different way outside of the church. Amen. Yep, that's right. I want to ask you today, church, or the, everyone sitting in here, everyone sitting in here, I want to ask you today. I want to ask you to look at yourself and say, are you that person? Are you that person that acts like a Christian in the house of God but doesn't outside of it? Because that's not how this works. Amen. That's not how this works. Amen. You're supposed to be a servant of God. You're supposed to be represent God from the time you get up to the time you go back to sleep no matter where you are. Amen. It's not something that's done just in this church house. It's something that is practiced through your life. And it's not, if it's not evident every day in your walk, something is wrong. Amen. Something is wrong in your life if that is you. I can't tell you what it is, but I know that it's a relationship problem. And nine times out of ten, I've seen that most of the time the relationship problem is that there's not a relationship. There's not a relationship there in the first place. The Bible says, I'm going to flip over to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. It says, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them. Because they are spiritually discerned. Now what this means is that if you do not have a relationship with the, Jesus, with the Lord Jesus Christ, you will not understand the deep spiritual meaning of the Bible. You can understand stories, but you cannot understand the spiritual meaning. For example, the disciples. As the disciples were there, they walked with Jesus for three years. And they believed who Jesus was. They believed that he was the Messiah. But they did not understand the things he said to them. There's things that he said that he could admit one thing that they would have thought of him totally different things because they didn't understand. And they would not understand until Pentecost when the Holy Ghost fell on them. And then they had spiritual discernment. But it was because they had the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Without the Holy Ghost, you can't understand this word. You can't. Amen. You can't. You can't be a servant of God after the Holy Ghost. You can't. As another example I'm going to use, Brother Mark Kimball, if you know who he is, he came and he did a revival at my home church. And he, he, it was a three-day revival, I want to say. He had three different chairs. And it, one of the chairs said, saved. The next one says, I want to say it was church worker. And then the other one said something else. Oh, no, 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 no. I got it wrong. I'm sorry. The first one said, the cross. The next one said, disciple. And the third one said, church worker. And he made the example that a lot of people just skip the first two chairs and go straight to the church worker chair. Now, were they, did they go to the cross? No, but they're a church worker. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you today, folks, that without a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, you can't do anything. Amen. Yeah. That's right. In this church, out of this church, what, whatever you think it is, the littlest things that you do in your walk of life, the littlest thing you think, oh, I can do that myself, you can't. You can't. You can't do it without the Lord. Amen. You cannot. Amen. That's good. You can't even breathe without the Lord giving you breath. Amen. Now, how are you going to do everything else? How? 
Amen. Now, Peter had done this when he fell off and when he was acting prejudice to the Gentiles. He did it, and it messed all the other Jews up, too. It wasn't just Peter that got messed up because of this. It said that other Jews fell away, and even Barnabas fell away at what Peter had been getting into. And this is another example. You have to watch what you do. You have to watch yourself. You have to watch what you do. Because what you do doesn't just affect you. It affects the people around you also. It affects everybody around you. They see what you do, and they follow it. I can tell you I'm a, I'm a pastor's son. A lot of y'all know my dad. I'm a pastor's son. And mama's told me ever since I was a little kid, white kids watch you. People watch you. Mm -hmm. They watch what you do. And I, I was like, why do they watch me? I'm just somebody else. I'm just a normal person. There's no reason to watch me. But I did not understand this until after I got a relationship with the Lord and I saw the different things that people looked and observed about me. Amen. Because we're called to be different. We are called as servants of God to be different Amen. than everybody else. We're not Amen. supposed to be like the world. We're supposed to be like Jesus. Amen. We can't be like Jesus without him. But we got to strive to be like him. Amen. And, and people out here in the world are not going to understand our ways. They're not going to understand it. The Bible says that we're pilgrims passing through. We're not of this world. They will not understand this. They will also not understand this Bible, as 1 Corinthians said. But I want to talk a little bit about reasons, some different reasons that I found, that people keep from having a relationship with God. And the two biggest things that I've seen and observed through the Bible is the first one is unbelief. They have complete they don't believe who Jesus Christ is. They don't believe anything. They don't believe in him. They don't believe that he's the Lord of all. They don't believe in him, any of it. Mm -hmm. The second is that they're following their own walk. They're following what they want. Mm -hmm. They're doing what they want to do. They don't want to be a servant of God because it may contradict their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Oh, if I become a servant of God and I go and I have to sit in the house on Sunday, I'm not going to be able to go get on my, on my boat on the lake. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. That's where we've got today. That we're so worried about our own self that we won't come in here and worship the Lord. Amen. Even though He gave everything for us. Amen. I was sitting in bed last night thinking and praying and talking to the Lord about what I was going to do. And then I, I was thinking about the different things that servants and masters do, how their relationship is. And you know, if you look back in the Bible, servants. They were all about whatever the master wanted. It wasn't about what the servant wanted. You wouldn't ever see a servant in the Bible. You wouldn't ever see a servant acting on their own accord. They were always doing whatever their master told them. That's true. Or whatever the master told them. They were sitting hand and foot waiting on the master. Whatever the master's will was, they were going to do it. Now, how is it that today we've gotten, as, as people of the church and people of the Lord, that we won't even claim our Lord anymore, much less do it? How pathetic is that? That we fall into the point that we won't even claim him. Church, I want to ask you today, do you claim the Lord? Do you claim the Lord? When you're outside of this house, I don't care how you act in this house. You know how you're supposed to act in this house. How do you act outside of it? Amen. How do you act outside of it? One of my biggest things, you can see how a person truly acts and what they truly think when they're away from adults, their parents, and the church. Mm -hmm. That's how you see where someone, that's where you see where someone's heart is. Is when they're where they're at, what they act like when they're away from people that would think something about them. Mm -hmm. That is where you see how someone will truly act. Amen. Church, I want to ask you today, how you act, is that lined up with the Word of God? Is that lined up with the Word of God? Do you act accordingly to what this says, the way this says you should be acting, or are you doing what you want to do? As I'll tell you, do what you want to do will get you to hell real fast. Amen. Real fast. You will turn around and you will be like the rich man. You will lift up your eyes and you will be in hell and you don't even know what's going on. Amen. But if you follow your own want and what you want to do, you'll get off in that. At the end of the judge period, the darkest ages, the darkest age of Israel, it said that they acted and they did what they thought was right in their own eyes. Mm -hmm. Not what God thought was right in their own eyes. They did what they thought was right. They did what they wanted to do. 
And look where it got them. It was the darkest age of their people. That's what they were off in. Because they wanted to do it. And we'll turn over to Mark chapter 10 in verse 17. We're going to read in 17 and go through 23. And it says, and when he was gone forth and... I think I'm reading it wrong. Yep. And when he was gone forth in this way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Thou knowest that thou commandments do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear, bear false witness, be fraud not, honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all things I have observed for my youth. Then Jesus, beholding, beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have the treasure in heaven. And come, take up thy cross, and follow me. And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. And Jesus looked around and said unto his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? Now I want to back up a little bit and talk more about this. And Jesus said in verse 18, Why thou callest me good? There is none good but one that is God. And this goes back to what I was saying. We can't do anything without God. Amen. We cannot be servants like we need to without God. That is the first thing. In order for you to be the, the servant you need to be, you have to have the relationship that a servant needs to have. Your relationship with God needs to be growing every day. Christians, I want to ask you in here today, is your relationship with God growing? Is your relationship with God growing? Or are you doing what you want to do? Because a little bit of my testimony, I got saved when I was, I'll say I was about 12, but my relationship with God truly did not grow and start growing until I was 14, 15 years old. You know why? Because I did what I wanted to do. Why I got saved, he said, oh, I'm going to heaven. I'm good. I'm going to sit in this church pew. That's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to do anything else. I'm just going to sit in the church pew. It's real easy to sit in the church pew, ain't it? Cushion ones, very comfortable. You can sit in here and listen for about 30 minutes, go get you something to eat. That's very easy, ain't it? That's not the life we're supposed to lead. Amen. Amen. That's not the life we're supposed to lead. Amen. Yes, it's good to come in here and listen and get something from the message that the preacher brings, but you're supposed to be growing on your own accord also. It's your relationship with the Lord, not anybody else's. It's not the church's relationship. It's yours. And you have to be worried about your relationship with the Lord. Because if you don't grow it, mm -mm, you're not going to be able to do what you need to do if you're not growing your relationship with the Lord. It's not hard. It's really not hard. <clears throat> Especially once you get started, it becomes something you look forward to. I told Brother Wayne when we were getting started, I got to the point at school, there's such nonsense going on around, around, around me. I look at my Bible more than I look at my phone. Amen. Amen. Because there's so much nonsense going around me that I'd rather distract myself with this than listen to the podunk my classmates say. Mm -hmm. I know how it is being a young kid in here, teenage for teenagers in here. I know how it is, because I am a kid. I know how I know how y'all act. I know how it is. Oh well, yeah, it's cool in here. It's cool, all that good in here. Then I'll get out there in the world and start acting like yeah. <laughs> I see it. I see it. And teenagers in here today, I want to specify that that will not get you to heaven. Acting like that will not get you to heaven. That's not what this is about. It's not something that you can do on Sundays and you're okay. This is a lifestyle. This is a lot. You take this on your life and it transforms you. It transforms you. It changes you. You are changed from what you originally were. You are not the same person. Which is why it goes back to you can't do anything without God. You are so helpless when you're lost. You are so helpless that you have to be completely transformed from what you first were to be able to do anything that the Lord has for you. Because as humans, we are so wicked and carnal and evil that we have to be completely changed. Amen? Amen. Amen. We are, if you go in and really think about it, I looked at this when I was really start to grow my relationship with God, it, it tore me up because I would habitually sin. Habitually. Now, if you get off on when you're habitually sin, you're in something, okay? You are in something. You are not where you need to be if you are, are habitually sinning. 
to the point that you do something, you sin, you know you do something wrong, and that you don't catch that you've done it till after you've already done it. It's easy, too. It's easy. I'll tell you, when I was a kid, I you could not believe a word that came out of my mouth. <laughs> I lied like it was... I use this as an example. I've used it as an example the past couple of times I've preached. I remember one time I went, I was still literally living in parish. I went in there. Mom told me to go brush my teeth. I said, okay. I walked in there. I thought I was cool. I walked up to the faucet, turned that joker on, and looked out the window. I didn't brush my teeth. I just turned the faucet on. I thought I was cool. I got in there and I walked past her. She said, why did you brush your teeth? Yeah. Walked on in there. She walked in there and felt that toothbrush, and that toothbrush was wet, and the light got in trouble. But I lied so much that I was off in so much that it caused me so much trouble when I really got where I needed to be because I had to quit the habits. Breaking habits is not easy. It's not easy. A bit, I do so much stuff. Eventually, we have a gate at my house because I live at, at um, Camp Dots, and we, we caretake it over there. We have a gate that has a pad. You gotta walk up to, or you gotta drive up the pad, hit some buttons, and it, and it opens the gate. Well, in our truck, we have this little thing up here. It's a clicker. It's cool. You click it, and then the gate opens. Well, I'm so I don't I don't have a clicker because I drive my car every day, so I have to go hit that keypad. That I habitually pull over to hit the keypad. Mom was like, "What are you doing? There's a clicker out here." I'm like, "Oh, sorry, I clicked the clicker." But it's habitual to the point that I do that. Church, I want to ask you today: Are you habitually sinning? Are you habitually off in what you need to be, or in what you don't need to be? Excuse me. Are we doing that? Because it's easy to get off in. It's really easy to get off in. And it's very easy, very, very easy, and I know, again, I can testify this because I did. It's very easy to act like a Christian in here, but not out there. It's very easy. Believe me, I told one of my classmates one time, she said, Why, why are you so different? I said, Because I have to be. She looked at me. She said, what? What do you mean you have to be? I said, I have to be. I said, if I wanted to fit in, I could do it real easy. I could do it real easy. She said, how? I said, okay, one, stop bringing my Bible to school. Don't bring my Bible to school. All right, then, dirty my mouth up, start cussing. I'm popular right there. Bam, everybody likes me. It's real easy. It's real easy to fall into. It's easy to be liked. It's easy to do things for attention. Oh, attention. Oh, don't. Don't get, don't get me talking about that. Don't get me talking about that. A little bit more about my testimony. When I was a young kid, my dad was a pastor over at Barton's Chapel in Cordova. And at the time, we had this huge youth group. We had about, I'll say, 20, 25 kids in the youth group. And we had kids going up and getting saved. These were teenagers. They were going up and getting saved. And, you know, little me sitting in the pew, I was like, that'd be cool. I get to get up in front of the church. <laughs> and so little White got up there, and it's stupid. And prayed a prayer that hit the ceiling, right? I prayed a prayer that I didn't believe. I didn't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I was still as lost as everybody else. I said I was saved. Amen. said I was saved. I lived that till I realized where I was. Amen. And it's real easy to do. Church, I want to ask you today, are you sitting in here not saved? Are you sitting in here not saved? Because you can come to church. You can go to church and, and just go through it. You can go through the motions. And not be saved. You can go to church and not be saved. I see it every day. Amen. People at school are like, yeah, I go to church. I read my Bible. One of my but he's a good kid, but he does not have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. He told me, he said, why? Well, I read my Bible pretty much every day before I go to bed. I said, okay, that's cool, but do you apply it? I'm like, what? What do you mean apply it? I said, do you apply what it says to your life? There's a difference between reading this and applying what it says to to do to your life. Amen. Because if you're not, there's no point reading it. If you're reading it like that, it's just like reading a book. And also, if you're reading it just so you can say, oh, I read my Bible, I ain't got to do it later today or later on. I read my Bible, I'm going on behind. You need to get away from that. You need to get away from it. Because that ain't doing nothing for you either. It's not. And I can testify from it. Because I lived it. I lived this life, people. <coughs> I lived this life. My dad was a pastor. He's been a pastor ever since I can remember. And I lived it. And I can tell you, don't do anything for you. Not at all. If you're wanting to live that life, you're wanting to stay in that lifestyle, I can tell you, yeah, you may feel good. You went to church on Sunday morning. 
But when you're out through going through your walk a lot during the week, you're going to be miserable. Amen. You're going to be miserable. Amen. And I am too. I was, well, not am, but was. I was miserable. I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't understand what was so wrong with myself because I messed up and I did stupid stuff all the time. Then I tried to walk in the church and act like I was a saint when I was lost. Mm -hmm. It makes me so upset to see how I acted. It makes me so upset to see how people act in the Lord's house. Because this is, this is nothing but a tradition anymore, people. This is a tradition. This isn't even a lifestyle anymore. This isn't a live world disturbance anymore. This is something we do to make ourselves feel better, and that's not what this is about. It's not what this is about. Amen. If you're doing this, and you're coming in here, and staying here, and coming in here to listen to someone talk for 30 minutes so you feel better, leave. Mm -hmm. Leave. It's not doing you any good. It's not. I'm just going to be up front and blunt about it because there's no point in tickling your ear. If you're coming in here to feel better about yourself or some, somebody makes you, leave. Go. It's not doing you anything. You're wasting your own time. If you're going to come in here and not surrender to the Lord and live a life completely opposite of what this says, there's no point in being in here. No point in it. No point. I can testify to it. When I was a kid, I hated church. Hated it. Hated it. And I wouldn't say that I hated it because I was like, oh, well, it's church. I like the people in church. No, because I would have to sit there and hear someone talk about my problems. I hated it. I'd walk in there and somebody would, dad would start preaching, whoever would start preaching. They'd start preaching about something that hit me in the heart, convicted me so much because I was walking in sin. And I hated it. And it didn't get better until I gave my life to the Lord. Amen. And I lived the life that I needed to be, and I fell into that lifestyle. Now, that's why I asked you with the Star Church, do you, are you living that lifestyle? Are you living a servant life? Are you being a servant for Jesus Christ? Because if you're not, it's about all I can say, is get where you need to be. Amen. Woe to you. Amen. Woe to you is all I can say. Because after you get saved, and after you fall in this lifestyle, and after you grow your relationship with Jesus Christ, you will be blessed more than you can think. Amen. The book of Malachi says that the Lord wants to open the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing so much that we can't even receive this blessing. Yet what's holding people back is their unbelief and their unbelief. That's right. I'm going to turn over to... The Gospel of Luke and talk a little bit. This is this is Dad preached on this a couple of days ago. We're going through the Gospel of John as we're approaching uh, Easter, and we turned over to Luke and talked a little bit. Starting in verse fifty, it says, "On one of the one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear." And Jesus answered and said, "Suffer ye thus far." And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said unto the chief priests and captains of the temple and the elders which were coming to him, Be ye come out as against a thief with sword and staves? When I was daily with you in the temple, ye stretched forth no hands against me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. I want to pause here and talk a little bit about at the start in verse 50. It says one of them, <clears throat> Peter, smote the high servant's ear off. And Jesus came up to him and touched his ear and healed his ear. Completely. He, he didn't say, hey, come over here with me. We're going to go in this bush and I'm going to touch your ear. You're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. He didn't say that. He straight forth in front of all of them, in front of the people who wanted to kill him and heal this man. Gave direct evidence that he was the son of God. And what did they do? They still took him. They still took him. Now this tells us, church, this shows how powerful unbelief is. This shows. The two things that got these Pharisees and these people messed up was their unbelief. They did not believe that he was Jesus Christ. They did not believe that he was the Lord of all. And they wanted to kill him so bad that it became their own want that they let it motivate them. It motivated them to kill this man. He'd done nothing wrong. Nothing. He was perfect. He never sinned. All he did was help people and lead people to where they were. But he loved all of us. Yet they killed him. Because of their unbelief. Church, Satan has a hold on people today because of their unbelief. 
Their unbelief and their wrong won't is what chains them to this earth. It is what chains them. It is what keeps them back from a, a relationship with the Lord and the kingdom of heaven. Is because of their unbelief and their own voice. And I want to tell you today, again, that if you are working off of your own wants and you're not living how you need to be, you need to get it right. Mm -hmm. You need to get it right. And I'm telling you this out of love. I'm not telling you this because, you know, it's the right thing to do. I'm telling you this out of love because I know. I have the experience. I have the life. I've lived the life of someone that comes in here and sits in a pew every Sunday, does not have a relationship with the Lord, and I know how it goes. And I don't want you to live that. Amen. I don't. Amen. I really don't. I see it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. I go out here and I see people at my school. I go to Lynn High School, and some of these people are, I'm not even going to get started. <coughs> in. But I see them. These are my friends, and I see them all living the way they're living. It breaks my heart because they have problems, and they go through different things that would be so simple to them if they had a relationship with the Lord, but their unbelief and their own want holds them back. Mm -hmm. It holds them back. Now, I'll, I'll say this, and I'll shut up and let y'all go on. <laughs> I'll say this. I feel like I've rambled on like I'm looking at trees. If you're doing what you want to do, and you're living your own life, and you're not living for the Lord, you need to get it right. Amen. You need Amen. to get it right. Amen. <laughs> it's not hard. It's not hard. Being a servant of God is also not hard. You'll go through things. I'm not saying it's going to be It's not going to be Not going to be easy. That's not what I'm saying. But the peace of God, and God is going to be there and guide you through it. And it's Amen. the best thing ever. Amen. I can't tell you, I get so excited when I talk about it because I've went through so much hell since I've been became a preacher. I went through so much, just seeing different things, seeing the different way people act. But you know why? I would rather this over anything because I have the Lord. Amen. I have Him. Amen. I have Him. He gives me peace. He gives me happiness. Through my darkest days, He helps me and just brings me through it, and I'm fine. Amen. I'm fine, but it's because the Lord's there. Amen. It's because the Lord has me. The Lord has transformed me, and He's done different things in my life. He's blessed me so much. But it was because I surrendered to him in the first place. Amen. Yep. And church, as we, you know what, everybody in here, if you would, close your eyes, bow your head real quick. Brother Wayne, if you would, come up here real quick. We'll do invitation. If you are here today, 